right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Space Ghost Industry Leaders. We've had some great people on, and today is no different. We have John Hartman with Blue Marlin Real Estate. John caught my eye a while ago because of his video skills. I thought it was just a little abnormal for somebody to have such a high level of video that they're doing themselves. So started a conversation that way and wanted to bring him onto the show and talk about that. I think there's a lot of value for myself and for everybody listening, especially if you're a realtor looking to figure out how to do some video for yourself. So without further ado, John, thanks for coming on, man. What's up, Alex? So, yeah, let's jump right into this video stuff. Um, you know what? I'll start with how did you get into real estate? Let's just let's go from there. You've been in four years. Well, yeah. You know, first off, thanks for having me. Yeah. Super stoked to be here. Um, super stoked to talk about video with you, real estate video in particular. Uh, yeah, four years for me. I started beginning in 2019. Um, you know, my longtime local moved around and, and found myself in the real estate space here later later on in life. Mm-hmm. I say later on in life, in my back half of my 30s, so yeah. not really later on. And um, yeah, our background, which we can kind of talk a little bit about bits and pieces on as we jump around, um, you know, coming from the entertainment industry for the most part, my wife and I, Erica, okay. and myself, um, you know, we came in and had some form of video background in some ways, in different ways that we kind of brought into the real estate thing that we began to do. And um, I'm an OCD person, so I just deep dived into it and I learned as much as I can, a very self taught person. Yeah. And, um, you know, we've just been carrying it away and trying to make it unique and fun and making it our own. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. So you started four years ago and you were in the entertainment business before. What, what does that mean? So, I've done, I've worn a lot of hats over the years. Okay. Uh, again, f- being from here, initially Merritt Island, uh, born and raised and you know, moved around. I, I was in bands growing up and, you know, really since I was 13 was my f- probably first show and I bought a drum kit and uh, had been playing shows ever since as a drummer, as a guitar player, whatever. And probably the most notable thing I had landed was I was a drummer for the band, the Red Jumpsuit Apparatus. Okay. Uh, they were out of Jacksonville, Florida. That's cool. Yeah, man. It was a really fantastic run and experience for me. Probably around five years I was in that band, joined them just after they had kind of really broke success for them with Virgin Records, had a major record out there. And and then I got the opportunity to join as the drummer. So I spent years on the road with them, maybe eight months out of the year. We were touring internationally, making records in LA and all over. Wow. And um yeah, I just opened a lot of doors and was a ton of fun and um, did that for a lot of years. And then fast forwarded to when I found my time coming to an end, I, I left Red Jumpsuit and I was looking to do different things and uh, kind of explore different areas. I had a great time with that. Still great friends with all the band members. I stay in touch. And, you know, and uh, so when I had moved on, I did a number of things. Uh, you know, we were I was living in Los Angeles at the time with mm-hmm. my wife, Erica. And she was in TV production. She worked on the Dr. Phil show. So okay. she worked for the executive producer. And that was her first taste at, you know, working at Paramount Studios, working for like a major production. I was not expecting all this, to be honest. Yeah. So that's a little glimpse on where we got started with like the bigger things in our, you know, in our yeah. background. And uh, it jumped around. You know, we, we did a lot of things. She's managed, which we'll talk about our team in a minute with her involved in our real estate team. Yeah, but manage these multi-million dollar budgets with huge productions and that comes into play. And a lot of it was TV production for her in the background. And for me, it was, you know, maybe being in Red Jumpsuit or at one point tour managing a band. Atlas Genius was one of them out of Australia. They had Mm -hmm. a great big record on Warner Bros and they did their thing. And, you know, I I did all these different roles over time. And so we kind of at one point decided to quit touring all constantly, which we were. Yeah. Uh, We had a little guy on the way who's now five. Wow. And we had decided right when we found out, do we want to do this in LA? Do we want to go back home and be around some family and have them have a relationship and maybe try something different? And that's exactly what we did. We kind of were intrigued by moving into real estate for some time and talking about it. And then Fast forward to taking that leap and then it being able to take off for ourselves and, yeah. you know, and then, you know, the real estate video thing had been a big part of our success as we grew year by year. Mm-hmm. So definitely. Wow. Yeah. So you're a good drummer then? I would say I've got experience drumming. Okay. I don't know if I'll say I'm a great drummer. All right. No, I mean, yeah, I, I, I've always loved playing drums and um, I've been fortunate to land some fun, cool, interesting roles. And a lot of it is your ability to go and perform in front of a lot of people. I mean, when, yeah. when it's showtime and we're in the Philippines and there's 30,000 people out there, you got to just bite 
drop the nerves, you know, the butterflies and get out and go do it. And, right. um, you know, so I've, I've had a lot, a lot of those big pressure moments where, you know, kind of tests you and you got to just go and do your best. So. so when you're out on the road doing this all over the world, are you home at all during the year or when we were touring? Yeah. Um, a little bit. So when I was more seriously touring with Ray Jumpsuit at that point, I was finding myself always just flying to LA to go see Erica. Oh, okay. whenever I was done touring, I would just fly to go see her. Yeah. And then eventually I had moved out there and then, you know, we it fast forward and, you know, we kind of jumped around the stories from there. But, um, yeah, that was, that was sort of what life looked like at that time. Yeah. Yeah. So you grew up here then? Yep. Okay. Grew up originally here. So you came back here and got into real estate and then you were like immediately getting to the video side of it. Right. Pretty much, you know, we had to figure out the ropes first, right? Like anything, yeah. like you come into a new industry and, you know, you got professional experience elsewhere, but you got to learn this new thing in particular now. Mm -hmm. So it took some time to kind of learn the ropes to figure out, get our bearings and figure out how, how are we going to, you know, prospect and make business, you know, and, and, and yep. succeed here. So it wasn't long before we started attempting the video thing. You know, yeah. I, I think I'd seen it out there. There's some other really great video influencers that are in real estate that I had drawn inspiration from. Yeah. Uh, you know, to name a couple, um, you know, Brad McCallum up in Canada, you know, I've been fortunate to become good friends with. And, you okay. know, it, through our time, I've been able to learn from him and really uh, just sort of model things after some of these other great re real estate video people mm -hmm. uh, that, that do real estate and do it well, um, you know, and, and having had gone to some conferences where I met other people that, you know, first it was just starting by a video introduction, my name out in front of a house in the driveway. We've all seen it, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and it was like a push I got from a friend who was successful to say, John, you could probably do this thing. You know, like I, you know, they saw yeah. that video which immediately translated into some new business and recommendations, referrals from doing a sort of awkward attempt at my first one. Mm -hmm. And just painfully pushing myself through that process at first and kind of that. Yeah, it's not easy for anybody. It's not, you know, you can say, oh, well, this person's good, already got that, or this person's good at this, they can talk or whatever, you know, and, and whoever you're referring to, I mean, it's, you roll the cameras and it's a whole different animal. It is. You know? And the pressure's on and you look back and it's always feels cringeworthy and you just got to push through that discomfort yeah. to continue and you have to, to get post it, to be honest. And you got to hit post. Yeah. You, know? you got to hit record and you got to hit post. Yeah. Even if you you're know? uncomfortable with it, even if you don't love it, you got to post it. You got to post it. Because that's how you get over it. Yeah. And one thing I was talking about with uh, some other buddies recently about this very subject was people get behind you. You'd be surprised. You know, you get, you, you're afraid to, mm -hmm. to put yourself out there. Yeah. And what does that come from? It comes from, oh, well, people are going to think this of me. Or yeah, just insecurities of insecurities. some kind. Insecurities. Guess what happens is those people that really care about you, they begin to kind of step up and they, and they say something that kind of is inspiring or like good job or pat you on the back with those yeah. comments. Right. It's not always going to happen, but... You see your true but those little supporters. comments help. And they do. They boost you and they give you that, yeah. that motivation to keep going, to keep putting it out there, you know? Mm -hmm. So Yeah, and I think it's more than just you're trying to make some entertainment. I think each video actually has value in it. Yeah, you know, I think that's important. I think that's what we try to strive to do. It's not right. always going to be the case, right. you know. We, I'd love to be creative every time and totally, re, you know, rebrand ourselves every time, or like not necessarily to that degree, but you know, doing something really different, fully different every time, just mm -hmm. to give whatever we're putting out next a new feel. And uh, that kind of creativity takes a lot of hard thought process effort, you know, a lot of very yeah. intentional, um, you know, planning and, and thinking about what's cool, what, what do I like, you know, what are people yeah. going to be responding to? And so it's challenging to kind of recreate new For sure. content. And but. I think something that I've seen work a lot more, and we just made a video about it recently, is just you have so many stories that happen every day in real estate and yeah. you can take those and flip it into a valuable, you know, video for somebody else. Yeah. And I mean... You know, there's stories about it's like, oh, I was covered in fleas when I walked into this house and you can turn that into something else immediately. Yeah. So I think you've done it and I've seen other people do it successfully where just write down some stuff that happened in your day. That's like, this could be a funny, good story that people will enjoy. Absolutely. Yeah. Your own experiences. You're the only one to have had them. So if yeah. there's some fun takeaways and just, you know. Being transparent with people, everybody screws up. Everybody has learning moments, you know, and if you're not afraid to put that stuff out there and especially back it up with, hey, what my learn you know, the things that I've learned through these experiences, that can go a long way. And I think that can really resonate with your audience. Yeah, I think yeah. so too. I want to talk about your set at home a little bit. Sure. So you've spent, you've spent some money, let's be honest. I mean, uh, I know your gear list here of what you've bought and it's high end stuff, but I don't think everybody needs to do that. Yeah. So, yeah. 
maybe let's just do a quick overview of like, what do you think is important for people? And I know these are your, some of your competitors that we're kind of talking sure. to here, but I just want to like give people some value of like, how do we uh, set something up in somebody else's house to where they can be doing something like that? Yeah. No, and I love to give that input. I talk about this stuff all the time to whether it's realtors or other people in other industries that value yeah. video content could see that helping their brand. Absolutely. And which is um, nearly everyone. It's just all, everybody nowadays, right? You know, you could, you could be all, all different sorts of spaces. I think what's important uh, you know, and, and there's a lot of successful people doing it with iPhone, right? Mm -hmm. First step, what we just talked about was getting on camera and doing it. You know, one of the first things I used to do before we had all this expensive gear, uh, which trust me was, um, it made me nauseous to pull the trigger on those cars oh, yeah. when I bought I believe you. those things and yeah. they begin to add up. I mean, at first it was just sticking the iPhone on a, on a stand mm -hmm. at eye level, standing up and saying something and then watching it back and doing it 20 times in a row. Yeah. No one else in the room and no one else saw these practices or these videos. Those moments are what helped kind of prepare you because un until you see yourself, you yeah. don't know how to improve. And so you can do it with iPhone, you can do it with uh, GoPro, whatever. Mm -hmm. And so, and I think it just takes starting. And you need to be able to do that first because if you're yeah. spending, you know, any good amount of money on on expensive equipment, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter how good the equipment is if you don't know how to yeah. say what you're trying to you say. Can drop a thousand dollars, five thousand dollars, whatever. Yeah. And uh and decide you're never you know, and find yourself never posting, never like right. you know, coming forward and just doing it and hit and post and record. Yeah. You know, so you've got to commit at that point, especially if you're gonna spend the money. But you know, the specifics what you asked, hey, you know, Go do some research online. Go do some YouTubing, right? That's where mm -hmm. I started. Um, I bought some Sony gear, you know, because I, I admired some people that were using Sony gear and their and their products that they were putting out there video wise. Yep. And so, hey, I got one of the the better you can get for video in particular cameras. Right. That's a Sony. You know, we're talking gear. I, I bought this Sony A seven S three. You know, and there were some other ones to pick from, maybe even a little bit cheaper. And I, that's what I pulled the trigger on because I felt like it was going to propel my uh, my uh, image quality even beyond the next set of people that were using kind of the mid range Sony. Yeah. And that was something I chose to do, and it wasn't cheap. And maybe I could use it more frequently to make a better return on that money. But mm -hmm. I'll have that for as long as it's relevant. You yeah. Know? And It'll last a while. Yeah. That's a good one. You know, what do you do for lighting? I have a few of those kind of like square lights, mm -hmm. you know, that they, you can change the temperature and you can change the brightness. And that's, yeah. that's kind of it. I've got another light that's like an RGB. It's kind of, you can go through all, all the scheme of colors and it kind of casts yeah. like, you know, like a, like a, a shade of any color I particularly want on the wall behind me. Right. Uh, I've got an LED strip or two that are sitting around that I can control from my phone. I can yeah. do a couple of different colors in the background. I do one main one everywhere, you know, and then a, you know, a, a neon with, with one of my wife's favorite sayings, this must be the place. Oh, cool. And it kind of just, it's sort of vague, but sort of, sort of hits the yeah. subject, you know, and it kind of applies for our real estate thing and our it home does. thing we do. And, yeah, yeah, you really kind of made the spot your own with just the lighting, really. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. with some colors and just a little touch here, a little touch there. Yeah. And it's like, that's that's your set. For sure. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, we kind of designed it out and made it our own. And it definitely took a lot of this first half of the year from 2022 to go through planning of that. We started planning a year ago in December, our studio layout. And okay. then it's taken the first half of the year to first build it out and buy mm -hmm. the things and invest there. And then invest in the camera lighting equipment was first, I think. And then camera equipment, cause I was hiring a videographer at first in my studio. And then I bought the, took the plunge to buy the camera equipment and then I was mm -hmm. shooting myself. And then I need, needed to edit the stuff and know how to edit. So I started learning the editing software and that took months, right. Yep. Of YouTubing and learning. And then, you know, you just keep going down that rabbit hole. Oh, my, my, MacBook is freezing constantly because it can't handle this 4K. And then yeah. there goes another two grand in a Mac studio. It just keeps going and going and going. And you got to ask does. yourself, how important is this to me? And how long do I plan to do this for? And that was my, you know, determining gauge for yeah, I I mean, purchases. And the more expensive equipment you get, the it just like you just said, it adds up. It's like, well, now I need this and now I need this. And yeah, um, yeah, it, it, adds add up up. For, it adds up for sure. Pretty quick. So let's talk a little bit about actual real estate. Um, you've been selling for four years, like you said, and can you go over production numbers at all and what your goals are? Sure. Um, yeah. I mean, I've barely sold anything. No. <laughs> You're uh, off the show. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll see you guys yeah. <laughs> later. Um, no. So we, we sell my team, Hartman team. We're at Blue Moreland Real Estate. And so my team, which is majority myself and then Erica, who runs a lot of parts of our business, more so in the background, mm -hmm. you know, less client facing. 
you know, and I'm more showing property and kind of dealing with people direct. Right. And um, so we do about 10 million of volume at this point in our career. We're about four years into real estate. Mm -hmm. And so for the last like year or two years, we've averaged about 10 million, about 20 transactions a year. Okay. You know, and yeah, you've got agents that are clearing 30 million volume, 50 million of volume and some bigger teams that are doing even more than that. And I've heard of agents doing a hundred million uh, for us. I mean, it, it's a, it supports us and provides great income, you know, and, and it kind of helps us to be not overly tapped to where, you know, what's important to us is a very specialized process. Right. And, uh, and video is a big part of that, but it's not the only part, you know, a lot of what we do that's specialized, the only people that see it is our client. And really what some of those examples are, it's like a concierge service and it's not just taking the call every time they call because they got a concern. I mean, we have a very fine tuned focused thing, uh, that helps accommodate people who they are, what they're looking to do. And that sounds like fluff on the surface, what real estate is all about. But, um, we just, we just take it into extreme detail. You know, if you look at, at our video process at all, it should give you some insight to what it might be like to work with us because we're very extremely detailed people. Yeah. So, um, you know, there's a lot of things that a lot of realtors I find don't do because I work with those majority realtors out there. Mm -hmm. And so when it comes to, you know, working directly with um, every area of this business, with the appraisers, you know, with, um, you know, all the, the, the in-depth process that we go through, you know, and the things that we're involved in it versus a lot of people that are very checked out and they just let it happen. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a big difference if you were to try us out versus somebody else, I think. So for sure. And so Eric is on the back end of everything for you, like helping... Yeah. Kind of like a transaction coordinator almost? Yeah. Well, actually, we just now started uh, outsourcing transaction coordinating. Okay. Uh, so we've got that help outside as well now. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've, we're outsourcing that. But uh, she had been for quite some time. Yeah, definitely. And we've been able to buy her time back by outsourcing that role. And now That's it's great. more managerial, admin, big picture, uh, big picture prospecting, you know, as we aim to target and market towards specific owners for big houses that are waterfront, ocean, river, whatever. Yeah. And we've got methods that we've fine-tuned to get the conversations going with some of these potential sellers. Um, that's a big business planning area that, that goes on uh, that, that needs to be executed and, and in a way right. that grabs people's attention that has, you know, these people, they've, they're very established people, you know, and their time is valuable. So the way that you approach them is everything. Mm -hmm. And the, 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 the bar of your design template of the quality material that you're giving to them, the conversations you have, you know, it's all, it can be time consuming and it can, and it needs to be very calculated. So we're very much kind of masterminding all that stuff in the background together a lot of times. Yeah. So did you start at Blue Marlin? I did. Okay. Yeah, I did. So yeah, again, four years in, uh, you know, what I, what I saw at first when I started really paying attention to real estate companies, as I was getting into real, right before getting into real estate, yeah. you know, my eyes kind of opened up and started to consider who am I go with and blue Marlin definitely caught our attention before we got into real estate because their branding, their design was just something cool and unique. That was different than a lot of other brands. We felt that we've seen before for a long time. Right. And I think that's why they got one reason they got started was because they could have the ability to do whatever they wanted, you know, within the means of what real estate is all about, yeah, of course, but to not be confined and constrained by the image, the branding, the color schemes, the techniques and approaches that maybe a, another company would have that's been around forever that has a parent company that tells them all what to do. Right. There's so, certain just corporate branding and you have to yeah. stick to this. And right. Yeah. Blue so, Marlin does not do that. Yeah. They kind of reinvent themselves as they go and in, in, intended to be in a good way. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's grown to be a massive company that's local here. I mean, they, as far as the Florida's East Central Coast goes, I would say they're widely recognized as one of the most kind of recognizable, notable power players in the whole area. Yeah. I mean, with uh, in six years, a billion over a billion in sales and uh, almost 200 Are agents. Are they six years old? Yeah, about six years, I believe, something okay. like that. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And so they've treated you, uh, your career well and everything? Yeah. You know, that's that's definitely, I would say, you know, a huge reason why I'm, I've been at Blue Marlin and I've stayed at Blue Marlin is because primarily probably the relationships I have, specifically yeah. with the owners, but like like the staff, the team, the agents, and um, and how, how do those relationships work for me, you know? Uh, it's, it's just served me really well. We've got a great arrangement. We've got uh, systems in place where they can provide great leads to us, you know, and we can reap the benefit of that or, or, and, or pursue our own leads, yeah. you know, and, and opportunities for, for business, helping buyers and sellers do what they need to do to buy or sell property. And, 
And uh, they've just got great resources that are set up for us to go kind of kill it and have great success. Nice. For sure. So about 10 million a year. I kind of, I like talking about goals. Yeah. I like talking about just, you know, what are you doing to uh, reach the next level? Let's hear it. So I just want to know, you know, 2023 is right around the corner here, um, depending on when this podcast goes out. But 2023, what, what are your plans for it? What are you trying to do? Whether that's growing your team, whether that's numbers. Yeah. What are your goals? I'm a little less, um, and I know a lot of people say you can go get your goal and deliver your goal for yourself when you set up these habits and patterns and you stick to them and you hold place accountability. I'm all about that, right? right. Um, but I find right now in my life that I'm a little less focused on the numbers uh, because as long as we continue to grow, that's mm-hmm. my goal is to grow without a number attached to it. Yeah. Because if I'm growing, and, and yeah, that means maybe financially, maybe volume. I don't necessarily want to clear 100 transactions in a year all by myself. That You can't make more time in the day. Yeah, you, know, you no, can add you team cannot. numbers and things. And family's important still. And family's important. You know, we've got a five-year-old that, like, is, you know, the best thing probably has ever happened to me. So, and that's yeah. my experience in my family. But to me, that's important. And we devote time to spending family time together. Yep. And so in order to do that and still have success and still apply and, you know, ourselves to our business and not, and not let that suffer in the areas of our business, uh, you know, for our future goals, you know, maybe as we've begun to work with other agents on a, on a non-exclusive level where we have a relationship with agents and we can kind of partner on individual deals, which we've done before and we're going to continue to do, mm-hmm. uh, it allows us to free up a little bit more and, and send some, you know, great opportunities for working with a buyer or a seller to agents that we work closely with yeah. and then kind of partner on those things to a certain degree. And, uh, and that buys again, back our time. And so, yeah. you know, if we're clearing, you know, that 10 million and going into the 12, the 15, the 20, uh, fantastic, cool. But, you know, most importantly to me is that we're always improving this year. We didn't necessarily improve a lot on the numbers, but I think growth for me looked like deep diving in a, into real estate video. Yeah. So for me, you know, the process and learning all this definitely probably took a lot of time away from the first half of the year, away from going and client facing right. and showing houses. Yeah, that makes but sense. But to me, that was worth it because that was how I was going to grow next. You know, I could not only no longer just You're say, setting yourself up. Yeah. For that you know, stage. no longer requiring and I can only get video if I hire somebody, you know. Now I can go and shoot on the fly. You know, I can go grab it myself or I can hire, you know, photo op guy to go or girl to sh- hold the camera, shoot, and then send the editing out to somebody. And I can kind of manage all of that now better because I know the process better and I've walked and I've yeah. learned that. And that's sort of a version of growth for me this year. I think it's so, a, big, a big piece of growth. Yeah. I also think that as you're talking about, you know, maintaining time with family and whatnot, and uh, another key aspect there is maintaining a relationship with your clients that, yeah. you know, if you're doing 20, you said 20 transactions last year? Roughly, probably. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, you got to have time for all of them as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Absolutely. Make sure you can pick up the phone still. So mm-hmm. it gets tough as you're like growing and it's like, maybe you want to do 50 million financially, but can you even sustain it and give people a good, valuable like experience? Right. Yeah. I think that matters a lot. No, for sure. Absolutely. You know, when we take great care and, you know, and had feel a sense of great responsibility to a lot of our clients, we found our position ourselves in positions where, we had people that were either coming out of tragic scenarios or, or facing them. And, yeah. uh, you know, there's all of a sudden, you know, you see a side of real estate and, and your role and your responsibility totally different than the mechanical thing it might have once been where you're just transacting something like, a, yeah. you know, an item or a property or whatever. And uh, then suddenly your role for them is totally different. And so we've taken that responsibility on personally a lot of times. And uh, and not only that, the storytelling element to our video has seemed to kind of form into a version of creating something that sometimes people can take with them and look back on that time with their loved yeah, one cool point. or their place that they shared together and uh, and have that as like something to look back and remember that by as opposed to just thinking back on it, you know? Yeah, no, I like that a lot. Um, I think that's about all the questions I have for you. Is there anything you want to leave people though? A little nugget of value possibly? You know, um, since we're talking about all this real estate video, you know, I encourage anybody that's considering it to take that leap to, yeah. to get into it, you know, just to try it out. See, you, you know, you may not be comfortable with it at first, but you might find that it opens doors for you if that's what you want, you right. know, is to, you know, if anything, you being more visible, whether it's in this business or the next, it's probably crucial to your success rate. You yeah. Know? I think a lot of people, uh, they might even be best friends with somebody or close friends and they don't even remember that they're a realtor, for example. 
example. Yeah. It's like, but if you're just putting something out there occasionally of like, this is what I'm doing. This is, you know, my real estate story of the week, whatever. It's just that visibility is subliminally, you know, keeping you in the top of mind of other people. So. For sure. You know, and, and last thing I'll say too on that is, um, you know, we, you and I talked about maybe you guys' role in real estate video and, mm -hmm. and what you take on and what you don't. And, you know, similarly, as we've grown in the, in the video lane of things, we've kind of begun to consider helping other people and maybe even different industries provide, uh, you know, just video content for either their businesses or personal use or whatever, maybe yep. events and things. And uh, so as we kind of look at that as a possibility moving into the next year, that's something that we're keeping open-mindedness to. So yeah, you know, I like as, that. as people see what we do and maybe are interested in something similar for their business, that's something that I think that our eyes are open to moving in the future. Yeah, so. I think that's really great. I mean, we have just recently built out a curriculum for teaching people how to do their own video. That's uh, cool. Obviously, we're, you know, that's, we make money on doing video for you, but there's a, you need to be doing your own stuff as well. Even right. if you're doing both, you have a professional level of, of, you know, video going on. If you can supplement that and doing some of your own things, I would love to be, you know, teaching you how to do that. So for sure, I think it's just, you know, the more information you can take in on it and uh, the more professional you can make it on your own. You know, there's so many little things that we were just going over with somebody recently where it's like, you know, they had certain windows and they're facing directly at the window. And it's like, you know, a quick thing is like I have a light right here on the side of my face for a reason. So yeah. it's just like simple things like that, I think, is good to teach people. And I, I didn't know you were like thinking about doing that. But, hey, maybe there's a collab there in the future. It may be. Maybe we can be talking to some other people. Maybe yeah. we should have that conversation. Yeah, I think we can. Okay. Yeah, but I think that's good. I think just the more, you know, there's no, um, I don't own this information, you know. I think other people uh, will get a lot of value out of it. And I think just like you're doing, sharing some of that, people get a lot of value out of it too. So For sure. Good to share. Hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. All right, John. Thank you so much, man. Cool, man. Yeah, I'm glad you came on. Thanks for having me. And uh, maybe we'll maybe we'll uh, have a video class for you guys coming out soon. Maybe keep an eye out for it.